Okay, now that we know what slope is, as promised, I told you that this concept of slope is going to help us graph lines a lot easier. Um, so here's how we're going to do this. For starters, to make graphing easier, I need two pieces of information. I need a point that basically tells me where to start, and then I need direction, right? That's what slope is. Uh, and th that basically tells me how to move. So from this point, which direction do you want me to move? Um, you know, relating this to real life, it's like when you're asking directions to, you know, to the grocery store, to a friend's house, right? We got to know where are you starting from, right? Are you in Phoenix? Are you in Chandler? Are you at the airport, right? And then once I know where you're at, I can start giving you direction. And so in a very uh, mathematical sense, that's what's going on here. I have to give you a point. Where are you located at? Where do you want to start? And then I have to tell you how to move. So remember, a slope is not a point. It's the direction of movement. A point is an ordered pair. So how does this help me graph? Well, we're going to start at the point 0, 2. So on my grid, 0, 2 is right there. So how do I move to another solution point? Where do I get to another point on the graph? Well, this slope is telling me that my change in y is 3 and my change in x is 4. So I can start by moving over 1, 2, 3, 4 units and then up 1, 2, 3. And there would be another data point on the graph. So 0, 2 is a data point. And then it looks like we moved over to 4. What would that be? 2, 3, 4. It looks like 4, 5 would be another data point on this graph. Since I like three points, you can just keep moving, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3 to find another data point. And that looks like that takes us to 8, comma 8, all right? Or you can kind of move in another direction, right? Uh, another way to get a positive is to think of this as negative over a negative. And so that movement would actually be backwards for 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're actually going to fall 1, 2, 3. And so notice uh, in a span of just a few seconds, I've been able to generate four solution points. One was given, and the other two I found with my direction. And so that's kind of the beauty of slope, that uh, it helps us with the direction. It helps us find another data point. So graphing made easy. Um, um, so yeah, and then the next example, we're starting at a location of 0, 1, so there's my information. And then uh, my slope, uh, you got to be careful with that negative. Uh, as we've seen in other videos, there's two locations where you can put that negative, upstairs or down below. And that's going to be huge when we talk about slope. So what's my change in y? Well, if I use it this way, my change in y is dropping down. 1, 2, 3, and my change in x is positive, so I'm moving over 1, 2. So there would be another data point based off of that movement. We can keep going in that direction, 1, 2, 3 down, 1, 2 over, or I can use that idea. In this case, the, the vertical change is positive, and the horizontal change is negative. So this has me moving up 1, 2, 3, and then back one, two. And you notice that all my data points, like they should, line up. And so there's basically the picture of the line that goes through zero, one with a direction or a slope of negative three halves. So that's how graphing can made be easy. So now the challenge is, is how do I go from an equation like we've, we've been dealing with, 2x plus 5y equals 10, and how do I find the slope for that line and how do I find a point for this line? All right, and so that's going to be our next challenge because we can see if I can find a point and I can find the slope, graphing is pretty easy. So we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you guys there where we'll pick up this story. Talk to you later.